WWE rarely put their faith into something new, usually opting for the tried and tested on their product, especially when it comes to the top of the card. The Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar, the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, and the visionary Seth Freakin' Rollins, names and faces that have dominated the world title seed in WWE for nearly 10 years now. In that same time frame, we have seen an attempt at something new in the main event, but deep down, WWE really never gave it a good go. The late Bray Wyatt's underwhelming run after a big win in the Elimination Chamber, the rags to riches ascent of Jinder Mahal, although disliked by many, not me, and of course the unanimous crowd reactions that took Kofi Kingston to the WWE Championship even though WWE decided to end his run in 7 seconds because they had to punctuate Smackdown's move to Fox and sell the audience on Brock Lesnar vs Cain Velasquez at Crown Jewel. Why you may argue, some of these examples didn't have what it takes to ascend to the throne and become a king in WWE, many will argue a certain prince has all the tools and is still waiting for another opportunity to be crowned. Because let's be real, we can't pretend like they didn't try. August 21st, 2016, a demon Finn Balor became the inaugural WWE Universal Champion. But this only began the unfortunate juju this title was to have in its early years, as on the following night on Monday Night Raw, Finn Balor relinquished the title due to a dislocated shoulder and a severe labrum tear. Is it as easy to say that if it wasn't for the buckle bomb to the guardrail, we could be discussing the birth of a new top boy in the industry? Let me know your comments below. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Mex. I make videos on WWE and AEW. So if this sounds like something for you, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button as well. And let me tell you about the truth about Finn Balor's WWE career. So before we get to WWE, I'll give you a little backstory. The Irish superstar started wrestling in the year 2000 and got his experience in the ring, traveling around the world, turning up in countries such as the United Kingdom and Mexico to name a few. His charismatic character work and blossoming in-ring style got Mr. Fergal Devitt invited to join the prestigious New Japan Pro Wrestling Dojo in 2005. This was the American branch in Los Angeles, but it wasn't before too long they started noticing his potential. Devitt was relocated to the main New Japan Dojo in Tokyo. Japan became home to Devitt as not only did he graduate from the New Japan Dojo, he earned himself a contract with New Japan Pro Wrestling. With this, Prince Devitt was born and off to the races, showing his in-ring skills to the crowd that demand the very best in pro wrestling. He did not disappoint as over his time in New Japan he became a junior heavyweight and heavyweight tag team champion, won the best of super juniors tournament and not to mention becoming an iconic multi-time IWGP junior heavyweight champion with key title defences against the likes of Loki, Kota Ibushi and DDT's Kenny Omega. As Prince Devitt's star grew, he outshone previous tag partners and factions he was part of and eventually formed the legendary faction Bullet Club, bringing together predominantly foreign wrestlers to cause chaos and mass disruption in the regal Japanese promotion, but with a westernized flavor. At this point, Bullet Club are firmly embedded in professional wrestling folklore as it has been a launchpad and star making factory for many a member of the faction. But following an announcement in 2014 that he was going to join WWE, Devitt was brutally kicked out of Bullet Club and replaced by new leader AJ Styles. Upon joining WWE NXT, Prince Devitt became Finn Balor and this was when he earned a real spotlight in the world of pro wrestling. Once upon a time, Balor was the longest reigning NXT champion of all time. Funny enough, if his Bullet Club successor AJ Styles can claim that he built SmackDown, then Finn Balor can definitely claim NXT was the house he built, maintained and evolved as his contributions alongside others helped change the WWE developmental into its own mini super indie promotion. Finn Balor and his demon persona was loved by the NXT universe. And if we know anything about WWE, this was probably one of the key factors that soon saw him get the call up to the WWE main roster. During the July 2016 main roster draft, Raw picked Finn Balor in a move that was something of a phenomena of its kind. Due to the return of the brand split, a draft was needed. 
Never before had we seen an NXT star be handpicked in a draft by a general manager to come up to either of the flagship shows until now. Not only did Bala get this honour, but he was entered in a fatal four-way match against Rusev, Cesaro and Kevin Owens in which he won, progressing to face Roman Reigns, who he also defeated to then get an opportunity to become the first ever WWE Universal Champion at SummerSlam against Seth Rollins. WWE established Bala as a main eventer in one night. Like I mentioned earlier, after a grueling match, wrestling almost 20 minutes with one arm, the demon Finn Balor became the WWE Universal Champion. A star was born, Finn Balor went from indie darling to NXT legend to inaugural WWE Universal Champion in a very short time span. This was the main roster debut that dreams are made of, dare I say it, a new face of WWE had arrived. But little did we all know about the dark destiny that awaited Finn Balor, as 22 hours after becoming the first ever Universal Champion, Finn Balor had relinquished his title as he had to go through shoulder surgery. SummerSlam gave him all he desired, but the injury took away his crowning moment, which wasn't good for Balor or the WWE in an attempt to establish this new title. After eight months, Finn Balor returned to in-ring action after the injury, but he could never attain the momentum he had left with. He won the Intercontinental Championship, but the run was hardly memorable. However, in an act to use his star power effectively against the newly established All Elite Wrestling, Finn Balor returned to NXT with a persona much more akin to his New Japan Prince Devitt character with a view to shake up the main event scene. He was no longer just a smiley baby face, throwing his hands up in the air for the fans' adulation, but a much more calculated character with a much more violent edge which went on to again rise to the top of NXT, winning the NXT Championship and arguably having a better run as champion than his first time with the belt. The reboot of Finn Balor was complete. The fans salivated at getting this meaner Finn Balor again on the main roster. After what was supposed to be a three month excursion to NXT turned into two years, largely because of the global pandemic and the growing popularity of AEW, which was also on a Wednesday night like NXT, Finn Balor returned to the main roster, but unfortunately, normal business had resumed. Even the kayfabe superpowers of the demon was fading as he lost title opportunities to Roman Reigns and despite a United States Championship win, it was more of the same uninspiring booking that he faced before his second stint in NXT. Every major rivalry had ended with a loss for Balor and even the most loyal of fans were losing faith in the Irish sensation. Nevertheless, there was a glimmer of hope on the horizon in the way of a flourishing new faction, the kind of settings where Prince Devitt once got to the top of the mountain and reigned supreme. In June 2022, after past attempts fell short, Judgment Day leader Edge thought he had finally done enough to convince Finn Balor to join the enterprising new faction, only for it to be a setup where Bala made an alliance with Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest to kick out Edge from the group as the group didn't need a leader and all members of the faction deemed themselves as equals. This was good for Bala as we had never previously seen him as an out and out heel in WWE. The faction breathed new life into his character, although losing big feuds was just a part of his DNA at this point and despite the growing dominance of this group, the high profile losses for Bala continued. However, yet another chance to become a top guy in WWE was around the corner, almost in an identical fashion to how it happened the first time. May 8th, 2023, Finn Balor found himself in a triple threat match against Cody Rhodes and The Miz and after winning this became the number one contender for the new World Heavyweight Championship against none other than Seth freaking Rollins. It was the revenge opportunity of the ages. Balor was to go against the man who ultimately cost him his massive push with that buckle bomb on the barrier all those years ago. With the Judgment Day cooking and the new World Heavyweight Championship said to be implemented to give other roster members a chance at gold because of Roman Reigns stranglehold on the WWE Undisputed Championship, fans were already assuming it was a shoe in for Balor to become world champion once again. After seven years of mishaps, Bala finally got his chance to prove to the WWE and the WWE Universe that his days of being a champion were far from over, but WWE thought differently. 
Balor lost to Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank. Another blow to his chance of ascending to the top. Another high profile loss. And at this point, it was just becoming a bit embarrassing for Balor as Rhea Ripley was the women's world champion and at the same event Balor lost to Rollins, another stable mate in Damian Priest became Mr. Money in the Bank. The faction were collecting notable accolades, but their most experienced member of the group was still choking on the main stage. But after Money in the Bank came SummerSlam. Yet again, Balor found himself in a singles match for the World Heavyweight Championship exactly seven years on from SummerSlam 2016, where Balor won the WWE Universal title, and this story figured strongly in the match build. This was another big opportunity for Balor's career as he could have continued where he left off despite it being seven years later. It was clear that if Balor ever wanted to be considered seriously, he must have to beat Seth Rollins right here, right now. And if he didn't, the chance of recovering from another high profile loss would be slim to none. But despite struggling for seven years to get a chance like this, WWE wasn't ready to give Balor the title. Finn lost at SummerSlam and many fans believed that that was the final nail in the coffin in regard to big pushes for Finn Balor. To quote my wrestling's brethren, Balor is buried and maybe the prince was just always destined to be the prince and not become the king. Many would believe that Finn Balor at 42 years old won't get another chance at the main event. However, the truth of the matter and what I believe is that at 42 years old, he's now primed to be one of the top guys in WWE. I know it seems hard to believe with everything I've shared in this video. And I mean, after two back-to-back -back losses to Rollins, a WrestleMania loss to Edge, and a demon character being overcome by God, I mean Roman Reigns. No, actually, I think it was God. Fans may not be able to take him seriously anymore, but with the Judgment Day being one of the most popular heel acts in WWE, and as of time of recording, holding a lot of the WWE championships, the iron is still on and it could soon be time to strike. If you listen to me on this channel regularly, you know I said very soon after Triple H was given the reins in creative that by December 2024, Balor would be world champion again. And yes, we have had recently two opportunities to do this at Money in the Bank and SummerSlam, but I think an opportunity will rise again, especially as stablemate Damian Priest holds the Money in the Bank briefcase. Even I would admit, time is ticking for Finn Balor and the pursuit of a real world title run in WWE. But there is still time on the clock. WWE champions ages tend to trend upwards with the likes of Batista and Bobby Lashley becoming first time champions at ages 40 and 44 respectively. And even if we look at the other guys active today touted to become champion one day, superstars like Damian Priest and LA Knight are both currently 40 years old. Finn is definitely still in with a claim to the throne, albeit a slim chance in many fans' opinions. His latest Grand Slam accolade, yeah, I'm currently taking with a pinch of salt. As holding the Universal Championship for 22 hours feels cheap, and I feel a more relevant world title run needs to eradicate this one from the memory. But what is next for Finn? What does WWE have in mind for him? Are his days as a top-rated WWE superstar perishing? Is Balor merely a bridesmaid that never becomes the actual bride? Till now, it seems he has gone through non-recoverable losses, but one thing with Finn is that he always gets a chance at that main event picture, which makes him one coup de grace away from the mountaintop. Let me know in the comments if you ever think we will see Finn Balor as a world champion again in WWE. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. WrestleManiac UK signing out and I'll see you soon.